Those are indeed real animals, very tiny polyps, and if you look real closely, they just resemble tiny anemones. So, and they'll grow by producing a calcareous shell, and it's just like, you know, if we were building a skyscraper, except that every time we decide to expand, instead of building a new building, we just added a floor each time. Um, and some of those corals in there, the ones that you see blowing around a whole lot, those are soft corals, and they are similar in the fact that they have the specialized relationship with the zooxanthellae, which is the algae that gives corals their color. But they're a little different, of course, because they don't produce that calcium shell. So I'm quite pleased with its growth. Uh, a lot of it depends on what type of corals they are. Some of them grow a lot faster than others. Uh, some have grown about two inches at this point. Others have grown only, you know, a quarter of an inch. So, you know, it's, it's been fun watching it grow. It just kind of takes on life of its own. You know, they've grown quite a bit. So now we're having to do some trimming. So it's nothing more than just a pretty aquatic garden in the end. We have at least 25 different species. A lot of them are the same species, but just different color morphs. So don't be fooled if you see like a, a red. And a lot of that color is brought out by the different lights that you use. So in our case, we use more of a daylight bulb. And so those colors may appear to be slightly different from someone who might use a kind of a blue light. So a lot of coral enthusiasts at home will use actinic lights and that's really deep blue. And it brings out a lot of the different fluorescent colors. So that's why if you know someone or if you yourself have a reef tank at home with that actinic lighting, it may appear differently in color than what our tank does.